Okay, we're going to do the problems from last night's practice test, questions 31 up to 40, and here's the first one. Um, so Carlos and Marina are participating in a walkathon. Carlos walked one and four fifths mile. Marina walks two and one fourth. How many miles did they walk all together? The key words are they're walking all together. So that's telling me that I'm going to take these two amounts and I'm going to add them up. So one and four fifths plus two and one fourth. Obviously, I can't add these two because they have different denominators. Um, at this point, you can probably use your ratio squares to skip count and find a number that is a common multiple of five or four. Or just for the sake of time, I'm going to tell you that it's 20. So I'm going to use property of one to help me figure it out. I know five times four makes 20, so I'm going to do 4 over 4. That's what we mean by property of 1. 4 over 4 is equal to 1. To turn this to a 16, 4 times 5 makes 20. So 1 times 5, so I get 21 over 20. I get 3 and 21 over 20s. This is an improper fraction. So I'm going to ask myself, how many times does 20 go into 21? It goes in there one time. And my remainder is 1, 1 20th. So I'm going to add now this 3 plus this together. And I should have 4 and 1 20th. Okay, let's look when I pick up my sticky note. Remember, I always cover up my answer choices. And when I do that, there it is, 4 1 20th. The answer is D. Let's look at this one. And even though there's a problem we haven't done before, we should be able to figure it out. Elise stores three gallons of water in her emergency kit. How many quarts did she did Elisa store? One gallon is three quarts. So if one gallon equals three quarts, then three gallons, so if I use my property of one again, three times one makes three. Oops, sorry. If, um, one gallon makes four quarts. Me not being careful. One times four makes four. Four times three, I have 12 quarts. So let's look and see if it's there. And there it is, choice D. How many times greater is 50 than 500? So how many times greater is the 50? So I'm going to start with 500. And I'm going to ask myself, how many times do I have to move the decimal just to get to 50? Once, twice, I'd have to move it three times. So if I'm moving it three times, that's the same thing as power 10. And I moved it three times, so 3 to the power of 10, um, 10 to the power of 3. Or I could think of this as 10 times 10 times 10, which is really the same thing as 10 to the third power. 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000. So it's a thousand times greater. And let's look at our choices. And there is a thousand. So notice each time when I'm reading, I'm always covering and I'm always thinking of what my problem is asking. Okay. What expression represents the fraction of the rectangle that is shaded? So they're asking me for an expression, not just what part is shaded, what expression. So I'm going to think of this as an array. So I see two rows here. And up here I see four fifths shaded, that four out of five are shaded. So I could see this as two times four out of five. And that would give me, if I did my multiplication, I would get oops, three, two. I would actually get eight tenths. So I do see that. So let me see if I can find this multiplication. But I'm looking at this part, I see two rows, and I see four fifths. That's what I'm seeing. So let's see. And I do see two times four fifths right here. That's what we're looking at at this point in time. Okay. So let's go to the next one. What is this huge number rounded to the nearest tenths? So I'm going to write them rounding to the nearest tenths place. So let's look at the number. 
five, four, six, six, eight, six. Here's my number to the nearest tenths place. How do I know? Because after my decimal, I know it always goes tenths, hundreds, thousands. So here's my tenths place. And I'm just going to look at the buddy, and I see that it's an eight, which means I get to round this up. So my six gets to become a seven. Let's see what matches my work. There it is, D. Let's go down to the next one. Fill in the box to make the number sentence true. So I guess I'm going to solve it. I'm going to start by doing that. Four one-fifths times two-thirds. Five times four is twenty plus one. I'm just turning this into an improper fraction. Times two-thirds. And I get... 42 over 15, which is an improper fraction. So I'm going to do my division. 15 goes into 42 two times. And that gives me 30, and my leftover is 12. So 2 and 12 over 15. I have to simplify 12 15. My common factor is actually 3. 3 goes into 12 four times and three goes into 15 five times. I'm doing a lot of that stuff in my head now, which at this point in time we should be able to do. If not, you're doing it on paper. And let's see, here it is, two and four fifths right up top. Moving on, we only have a few more. I'm trying to get this video under 10 minutes. Okay. At the yarn store, one fourth of the yarn is cotton, three fifths of the yarn is wool. What is the fraction of the other material? So think about it. The whole thing, we're at, they're asking you to think about the whole thing. Out of the whole thing, one-fourth is yarn and three-fifths is wool. This is how much this part is. And I want to know what the rest of it is. So I'm going to figure out these two parts first. So my whole... Minus if I take away these two parts. Um, first I have to figure out what these two parts are together and I can subtract from the whole. I don't know what my denominator is right now. But it doesn't matter. I can just think of it as the number one for right now. Because I can change that to any fraction. So I'm going to start by adding one fourth plus three fifths. And we already saw that 20 is their common multiple. We did that already in another problem. Here's my property of one. 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 1 is 5, 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 3 is 12, and I get 17 twentieths. So I'm going to do 1 minus 17 twentieths. It makes sense to turn this fraction into 20 over 20. Why? Because I want to be able to subtract it. And I know that it can be any fraction it could have been five over five six over six but I don't want to change I don't want to do something that's going to make me have to change this so now I can subtract and get three twentieths and there it is as a so there was a lot of steps to that they're giving me what part of it is they're giving me the other part and they're asking me what is the rest of the material move on to the next one Gareth mixes 75 liters lemonade and fruit punch how many milliliters is this um, this is something that we're going to get to next week, but in science class, the kids learn that milliliters means it's a thousand milliliters. If you know Spanish, mil is a thousand. There are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So if I have only 75, 0.75 liters. All right, so let's think about our property of one here. How many times would I have to shift the decimal? To make a liter a milliliter. Let's just think common sense for a second. If I have the number one, here's my decimal. I'm going to have to move it once, twice. I'm going to have to move it three times to get a thousand. So I'm going to do that to this number. Once, twice, three times. So it's the same thing as 750 milliliters. We're going to learn about that problem a lot more in class, so we haven't done that yet. And there it is, 75 milliliters, 750 milliliters. Okay. Um, I wrote the value of these four numbers using exponents, which is the greater value. 
So let's try this one first. If I want to the third power, that means I'm moving the decimal three times. One, two, three. If it's times 10 to the fifth power, I'm going to start with 28 and I'm going to move my decimal five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now, common sense tells me the more times I'm multiplying by the exponent, the more zeros I'm adding. So just by common sense, I know that this number is going to have seven zeros behind it, and that's probably going to be the number that's the biggest one. That's what it's telling me right now. When you work it out, it will work out because you have to move that decimal seven times. All right, and the last one is a little tricky because of the wordiness of that. So I'm going to move this for a minute. And I thought about this one a lot. So... McGummy makes a drawing that has on half a large paper and constants on three-fourths of a small paper. Compare the area of each one. The problem is that I don't know the area of both papers because I don't have any other dimensions. So yes, it's true that his drawing is probably greater than her drawing. I can't say that his drawing is smaller, but it's really hard to visualize that. Because think about it, his paper could be kind of big and I have half of it. And as long as hers is smaller, three-fourths, it looks like it should be bigger, but it might not be because they're not telling me what the dimensions are. So right now I just feel that I don't have this enough information to really decide. Because they're not giving me any numbers. It's not telling me how much bigger or how much smaller. Well, I tried to make it under 10 minutes, but um, I guess I wasn't able to. Let's try out with numbers 41 through 50.